Live. Go to Tracy Brown Live. Gals and guys, go to Tracy Brown Live. Go to Tracy Brown Live. Go to Tracy Brown Live. Gals and guys, go to Tracy Brown Live. Go to Tracy Brown Live. Go to Tracy Brown Live. Gals and guys, go to Tracy Brown Live. Go to Tracy Brown Live. Go to Tracy Brown Live. Hey everyone. How are you doing today? Good morning and hello. How's everyone doing? Keep forgetting I don't have my iPad here. Hi, Jenny G. How are you? I keep forgetting I don't have my iPad, so I want to touch the screen because that's what I'm used to. How's everybody been doing since the eclipse? Has the weather gotten cooler? Did you get rain? What's been going on? You know, um, we've gotten rain since the eclipse and very cool weather, very. So I'm thinking CERN penetrated the sun. That's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking CERN penetrated the sun and now the sun doesn't work at full capacity. That's what I'm thinking. And I'm sticking to it. I'm a little late today, but I have to tell you, I am not motivated to get out of bed and get up and, and do my job. Hey, Angela. Hi, sweetie. All right. Hi, Molly. How are you? Partly cloudy and going to rain, right? Since the eclipse. All of this since the eclipse. This is bullshit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Realness goes, I've been super tired and sometimes supercharged. It's the eclipse. It's the eclipse. Hi, Tiffany. Hi, uh, exactly. You know what I'm talking about. Going to do a CERN reading. Well, I was, I was thinking about what reading I could do. So what would the question on CERN be, Angela? You're good at this. What would, what would be the question? Hi, Stephen. I've been missing you, Stephen. The weather has been much better here in New York. Right. It's much better here, too. What the fuck does someone do? Oh, did, did they penetrate the sun? The weather's been beautiful. Heavy rains, thunderstorm, cool. Oh, well, I heard Texas, because y'all got the path. Oh, you know what I saw? Y'all got the path. Y'all got the path. Of the uh 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 uh. So good health, Angelique Bright. Aw, let me see if I can find it. Tracy, no, wrong Tracy. Ah, uh, by the way, guess what happened to me? Guess what happened to me? So let me see if I can find. I love the way I'm looking for things and can never find the shit. It doesn't matter. So, the last eclipse went this way, and all the towns that it went through were identical. I, does anybody know that for, for truth? Kind of scares me. And the last eclipse went this way, and all the towns that it went through were identical. And the center was rapture. A town called Rapture. Yeah. 
that's I don't know. It's TikTok. But, you know, I believe in TikTok. I believe in TikTok like I believe in God. <laughs> yep. God's not going to get mad at me. God's like, I made TikTok. I'd be like, I know. Let me see. Oh, 12 a.m. yesterday? No, 12 a.m. Let me see. This wasn't it. Nope, 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 nope. It would have been yesterday morning at like 8 a.m. What are you guys saying? What's the question, Angela? Rihanna put out a video on how hard it is to be a mom with two children under two. And I think, although Rihanna's going to kill me, I think she put it out to stop anybody from mixing her into Jay-Z. Like, have pity for the mom with children two under two. Like, whatever Jay-Z did, I did not do. Look to Beyonce. That's what I think, and I'm sticking to it. Tell her a job interview. Quincy. I'm sticking, you know, I'm sticking to that, uh, whatever your name is, beautiful woman. I'm sticking to that because I know the truth. I always know the truth. Um, Tuesday. It would have been Tuesday, 8 a.m., but I don't see any postings here from me. I mean, I do see postings, but none of them are, let me go a little further up. It was so funny because it was like the rapture. Is anybody watching Jennifer Hudson except white folks? Who's watching Jennifer Hudson? I'm just curious. Sherry's back on the comedy tour, so I'm wondering if her show's going to last. Um, what do you guys think? Do you think Sherry's show, I mean, it's going to come back this year, but will it come back after this year? I don't know if they're breaking in the money that they thought they could Wendy is still hands down the best. Wendy, the best, hands down. She ain't even mobile. And when P. Diddy stuff happened, they were like, Wendy, Wendy, where are you? Okay. I can't find it now. Let me see if I can go to IG and look up Rapture. Twenty twenty four eclipse rapture. Let me see if I can find it. By the way, if NASA or the FBI calls you for anything, hang up the phone. Don't answer any questions. Hey, have you seen anything strange happening? In your town, Texas, don't answer. Just go, no. An alien could be sitting right here. Look at the alien and go, no. Don't answer, no questions. They'll unalive you.
is something going wrong with me spiritually that I get these messages, right? From IG and YouTube, which is how spirit talks to me. But then when I, I think I'm saving it somewhere, anywhere, I don't. And then, uh, This might be it. This might be it. Nope, still didn't find it. Damn it. Is this it? Nope. Some of you guys um, got to see the eclipse, which personally I would not have advised, but that's just me. That's just me. Because... Many people got sick afterwards and all that stuff because the protons, the protons and the neutrons that were swirling around, those things are real. <laughs> Listen, before I had this channel, I had nobody to talk to about this, no one. And now I have this channel and I get to talk my crazy. None of it is real, I get to, but I get to talk it. Oh, it was so good. Whatever it was, it was saying how the 2017, which was an American one, passed through all these towns named Salem or something like that. I don't know what it was. And then this one passed through all these towns with the same name. And then in the middle was Rapture. And I lately... I don't know what it is. Does God not want me to share with you all? Like, I don't understand it. Lately, whatever I save, I've been saying the same thing to you guys. Where is it? Where is it? I know I saved it. Maybe I'm not saving it. Maybe I'm the crazy one. All right. The American. Okay, let me see if this helps. Oh, it went through Evansville, Indiana, even. Went all through Texas, Dallas, uh, Austin, San Antonio, Dallas. Little Rock, Arkansas, Evansville. These are the states. But in each of these states, it all had very similar names. It doesn't matter. Maybe it was just for me to see. So weird. So weird, God. Here's another one. I hate things with music. In any case, the weather has since changed, right? And it's cooler. And I think CERN fucked us up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think they're laughing at us. <laughs> Stupid Americans. The weather in, in Texas is mosquitoes. The goal was to measure the neutrons and protons. I watched a video, although I don't like the girl in the video. She plays stupid, and I hate people that play stupid. What happened?
What is this? What is this? All right. Oh, I was going to look up a video that really explained it. But I don't like the girl in the video. She kind of, like, gets on my nerves. You know, when someone, like, grates nerves that you don't have to spare? She grated on my nerve. Um, let me see if I can find it. She was playing real stupid. But you know when some some people aren't stupid. Oh, here it goes. Oh, who's watching? Oh, let me see. This is it. See, my peoples. I got my secret peoples out there. They'd be like, I may not come on, Tracy, but I am watching you. And I know exactly what you're talking about because I was thinking the same damn thing. Okay, let's see if this is it. So this is a path that the eclipse on April 8th is supposedly going to go on. And this was from 2017, seven years ago when the eclipse came through. So on this path in 2017, there were seven towns named Salem, which in biblical terms is supposed to mean peace. On the path happening April 8th, there are supposedly seven towns named Nineveh. And where those two paths cross, there is a town named Rapture in Indiana. Some biblical scholars claim that when Jonah arrived at Nineveh, that an eclipse was taking place. According to the story, Jonah spent three days in the belly of the whale. In there. I volume, I volume. Okay, I don't know what I did wrong there. Let's Let's do it again. They're comparing that to the three days of darkness. Meanwhile, NASA will be shooting three rockets at it called the Serpent Deity. And many are saying the serpent's tongue is actually on the NASA logo. And while NASA's shooting rockets at the eclipse, uh, CERN's going to fire up their big collider. Yeah, they're going to be smashing protons and photons and opening portals and changing everybody's reality and shit. <laughs> Whatever the fuck they're doing. 16 miles long with smashing power to smash the smallest shit you could ever imagine. We can't even see it. And apparently we have several colliders in the United States as well. I don't know if they're going to turn them on. All this happening while the devil's comet glides by Earth. Hey, we have an extraordinary incident that unfolded at the CNN studio. Do you want to see it again? 2024 could be a highly met. Stop it. Messy year, according to Blues Berry. Do you want to do you want to listen to it again? Because it's a fucking nightmare. All right, going to be eighty five and sunny in L A. That's a good thing. Um, what is CERN's overall goal over humanity? Ah, do not believe that it is for humanity. These are scientists. Not every scientist is in the game for the overall goal of humanity. Remember the atom bomb. Sometimes scientists are in it to destroy the world. Not that the guy that created the atom bomb wanted to destroy the world, but it destroyed the world regardless. Hi, Michelle Bell. Hi, Marcella Amore. Hi, Bree. How you doing? Hi, Stacy. Stacy's my cousin. Hi, Stacy. How are you? Did Wendy ever start her podcast? Yes, Wendy did. And I think she is amazing. I think Wendy's too too much inside her head, so she doesn't always produce it. I also believe Wendy believes that the podcast needs to cost money she needs to dress up like an african queen turn on her own ipad and if she wants 
have people edit it for her. But she has this ridiculous, huge production and whatever, whatever. Jennifer Hudson has some explaining to do, mom and sister. What does that mean, Tiffany? I stopped watching Sherry because I call myself being loyal to Wendy. Well, that's stupid. Wendy wasn't loyal to Wendy. Don't do that. It was Wendy's job to care about her job. When Wendy stopped caring, I was out. I was like, Lord have mercy, Wendy, you too much. When Wendy let her husband take over her spirit and lose her fucking mind, I was done. Because we as women nowadays are not going to let men and emotions take us down. We never did in the past, so why am I following Wendy, letting a whole man take her down? I mean, she did get him back, but still, she hasn't been the same since. I wouldn't let that happen. I swear to God, I could find my man fucking in my bed. And you know what I would say to him? Get dressed. Everybody. I would sit on my sofa and I would not create an argument and I would say, your bags are already packed because I saw this coming. The fact that you got sloppy and thought it was okay to do it in my face. I wouldn't try to kill him. I wouldn't try to kill her. I would just tell her to take him. You want him? Take him. Because I got to burn my bed down. I'm not catching no bed bugs from some other bitch in my bed. My point to you is, there's no loyalty to mental illness. Wrong side of the fence. Wrong side of the fence. Wendy lost her fucking mind. And I love Wendy. I, I love Wendy, but she lost her fucking mind. Not, not doing it. Yolanda, good morning. I like Sherry, but the show is boring. I think that's what's happening to me, too. She doesn't have the Seneca Swa. What's that word? Genesis Squa. What's the word? What am I trying to say? She has it, but she doesn't have it. So I think Sherry is more free-flowing, right? Whereas I think the show contains her. I think she's censored. Oh, oh my God. Oh, I don't know why my breasts are bothering me, but I think it's the, the top that I have on. Oh, well. Um, but you're right. I do think she is. Something's missing. Something's missing, right? Wendy just had illumination. And I think Sherry came under Wendy's shadow. And the shadow still hovers. Like Stacy said, like, I want to be loyal to Wendy. I think that's the shadow that everyone is like, yeah, but you're not Wendy, right? I wish Debmar Mercury would have created a whole new show. That's what I wish. I wish they would have retained Nick Cannon. I wish they would have paid Nick Cannon to do the show because he was good. He was good. He was funny. He was great. But notice when Nick Cannon did his own show, he was boring. What is CERN's real agenda? To destroy the world. Are these the questions you want me to ask the um, cards, Angela? You got to see the eclipse, but you did not get sick. Okay. You might start seeing aliens, sweetie. <laughs> oh, you won't get something. I'm so happy you have this channel. Thank you. Thank you. By the way, call me for your own personal reading, guys. I'm here for you. I, I do all of this. I talk to the other side. I'm thinking about changing my title to Psychic Medium. I talk to the other side. 
the other day we had a reading about this, that, and the third, and we were discussing things back and forth. But when I looked at the cards, the cards were like, no, this is the answer. And I was like, oh, look at these cards trying to tell me my job. But I always listen to the cards. I never listen to my personal self, ever. Nevis, Nevis. Is that a meaningful name? Hi, sweets, Carmel. Salem is the town for witches. Is it really? Is it really? Are we going to label a whole town full of witches? By the way, have you ever been to Salem, Mass? They are so proud of themselves. They love their town. Mm -hmm. You should go visit one day. Um, they don't know what the hell they're doing. They're just playing around. Absolutely. CERN. Good rising. Hi, cuz I'm good. How are you? I'm doing good. Doing real good. Um, love you, love, love, love you, Tracy. Can't wait to have my next reading with you. Oh, Nikki, thank you. Thank you so much. You sound like me. If I ever caught my man fucking anyone else, totally unfazed. Totally. I would be like, you know, you just can leave, right? Like, make it easy on yourself. But I've been like this all my life. I never sweat male energy, ever. The last guy I dated, I broke up with him. But he was being a little... He was being a little bitch, though, the last one I dated. He was a little bitch. So I was like, oh, I can't take bitchiness, right? You're not even intelligent enough for me to put up with your bullshit. No, I really, I broke up with him because he was a drunk. And I didn't see it. I didn't see it for a very long time. But when I saw it, I couldn't unsee it. And so when I couldn't unsee it, then I kept looking at him like, and once he revealed that he was a drunk, then he would drink more. So then I started to measure his personality. He was so loving and engaging when he was drunk. He would always be like, I love you, I love you, I love you, when he was drunk. And then in the in the light of day, I'd be like, oh my God, you said such loving things last night. He's like, no, I didn't. I'm like, you did. Like, I'm a witness. <laughs> I'm giving testimony. And what I realized is that he wasn't mind fucking me, maybe a little bit, but he wasn't. He just really could not remember what he did when he was drunk. You know anybody like that? But he was loving when he was drunk. He was not violent, nothing, aggressive, nothing. He was so amorous and so loving. But I didn't realize that I had fell in love with, with drunk. But once I found that out, I cannot. I have drinkers in my family, and I cannot. I refuse to invest with a drunk. I refuse. You can have a drink. You can't be drunk. So. <laughs> Realness, burn the bed. That's the only thing I would have to do. I would just have to burn the bed. I don't want the bed bugs of a skinky hole. Like, what am I supposed to do? No, burn the bed down. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I would throw the bed out. I would buy a brand new bed. In fact, I probably would offer the bed to my man. I'm like, here are memories, take the bed. <laughs> probably change the headboard too. I don't know, need no greasy ass, dirty ass wig against my headboard, no. I probably, 
probably would switch rooms. <laughs> See, that's the crazy that would happen with me. I would never be aggressive with the man. I'd be like, get out, kids, get out. Then I'd be like, how do I burn everything down? <laughs> oh my God, you sound like me. That's why I love you so much. No need for violence. No, no need for violence. Like, no man could take me out of my emotions. If I get violent, it's going to be over food. Try to take my plate away. You're going to be like, mm, what are you doing? That's my dinner. I will kill you, right? Food. Emotions? Somebody doing another woman? Nope. I got too many things I got to do with my life than to wind up in jail because some man did whatever, whatever, whatever. Let me tell you something. My husband cheated on me. And I watched him. First, I couldn't prove it. So I watched him and then it got to be crazy. And so I was like, you're cheating. He's like, no, I'm like, you're cheating. He's like, no. So finally he says to me, okay, there is somebody else. And I was like, oh, okay. And he's like, and this was in October. Could have been September, but now I'm thinking it was October. And he goes, I don't even know what year this was. And he goes, my son was two. He had just turned two. And he goes, it's going to end January 1st. And I looked at him and I said, okay. I was like this. Uh, it's October. It's like, oh, January 1st, it's going to end. <sighs> okay. I bargained with him. And then I watched him. And then me and my dad plotted against him. Mm -hmm. I was like, hey, dad, so my husband's cheating. He's like, I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised that nigga cheated on you. Like, yeah, dad, um, I want to move. And he says, my dad was real cool. I didn't always agree with how he did things. And he's like, call me back when you're serious. You know, he hangs up the phone. And I was like, son of a bitch. Okay, so what he was teaching me was to not get emotional. If you're serious, you're going to do something about it. If you love someone, you're going to do something about that love. If someone is cheating on you, you're not going to spend your whole time complaining. Oh, he cheated on me. You tell your job. You tell all your best friends. And blah, 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 blah. You're going to do something about it, right? So I didn't say nothing to nobody. Only my dad knew. No one else knew. And so I watched him because what my dad said to me was, call me back when you're serious. And it made sense. So I watched him to get serious. And I know this sounds crazy, but you're not in my shoe, right? So I watched him not come home. A lot. I watched him leave on Saturdays and be gone all day. And now he didn't have to make up excuses like he was going golfing. He just left. There were no cell phones back in the day, by the way. And I had a baby to take care of. Right? So I got a job. And a really good job. And I just watched him for months. And December 31st, he was not with me. And January 1st, he was my husband again. The guy that I married, the guy that I loved. He, had, he kept his commitment and came 100% back to me. So I made love to him a couple of times to figure out physically what, what was this. So I made love to him a couple of times, maybe four, five, six times. You know, I'm young. So a couple of times to somebody in their 20s is like 10 times because you're like fucking rabbits. But I just wanted to see. And the sex was good. Don't get it twisted. It was very good. Then I called my dad. 
And I said, I'm done. And dad, my dad was ever too happy. He was waiting for that phone call. He was like, Bet, let's get started. Got my apartment, thanks to my dad. He's always gotten all my apartments, by the way. I don't know how to tell you all this, but every single apartment I've ever had, my dad got. Got my apartment. Made a plan, got the moving company. And I watched him go to work. And I kissed him goodbye. And I watched him walk down to catch the commuter bus. And as he was walking down, I was like, looking through the curtain. All right, dad, let's execute this. Grabbed my furniture and left. Never had one regret. Never gave two fucks after that. I finished this relationship by observing this relationship. When I decided he was an unkind man, I was good. I was out. Best decision I ever made. Yep. That's it. It looks so much like Wendy's old set. I placed an order this morning for the hair oil. Did you? Two for one, uh, Michelle. Wait. Oh. Oh, okay. You have a different name, right, Michelle Bell? All right. Two for one. Yep. In the reading, I want to know what CERN is really doing behind the scenes. Oh, okay. Hi, Carmen. How are you? How, how are you, Stacy? This is a giant mosquito on my front door. Oh, no. That came from CERN. All the mosquitoes came from CERN. <laughs> Ken, good morning. Mother of brats said, let my people go, and now CERN will destroy the world. Absolutely. Hi, Kathy. Let me tell you something. Blessed day, beloved. Hello, Kathy. How do you how do we prepare ourselves for CERN? For the attack on humanity? Well, first of all, you were supposed to start. Right? But for those of you that didn't start, you can start today. Second thing is don't fear anything dead ass. Don't fear life. Don't fear oversized mosquitoes. Don't fear the sun rays because the sun's going to start going crazy. Don't fear galactic visions that are going to start coming to you. And don't fear death. Except that the world changed on you. Started in 2020 and a lot of people missed it. There was no reason for the whole world to shut down. That's the fifth element doing that. That's a design by God. So if you missed that in 2020, and you started going back to your old evil ways, which most people did, well, then you have something to fear. But if you respect that you have to change, that the earth is not happy with us, and that purging is required, much like 2020, all of y'all got through 2020, what makes you think you can't get through the next phase of galactic stuff? You can get through it. You got to be spiritually strong. You got to stop worrying about that man, that bitch. You got to let yourself be one with the universe. You got to be at peace. 
and be one with the universe. You got to be willing to hear messages. Like we're we're all going to start. Maybe you'll maybe y'all want to join us. Maybe this is we're all going to start um, starting on 420, which is another galactic event with Jupiter and um, Neptune conjuncting. That means they in alignment and they talk to each other. This is Jupiter. This is Neptune. And other, let me see what's going to happen. Hold on a second. Don't you love to talk about nothing? Are you guys okay when I just jump around and talk about nothing? It's like a Stein, Steinfeld show, a show about nothing. Do you know I get on every day and I have panic attacks? Did you know that? Because I'm like, I ain't got nothing to talk about. And then look, we always find something to talk about. Let me check out astrocharts.com. Let me look at, why is my screen moving? Oh, Tracy. I always put New York City because that's where I was born. 04 20 2024. I'm going to put 12 p.m. And let's see what the chart looks like. Okay, so the sun is in Taurus, just entered Taurus. The moon is in Virgo. So everything about money. Mercury, Venus, North Node, Chiron are still in Aries. At 12 noon, the Ascendant is going to be in Leo. Why wouldn't Leo have a very prominent position? Um, the Midhaven also will be in Aries. So Aries, North Node, Venus, Mercury is one, two, one, two, three, four, five planets in Aries. Um, and Uranus and Jupiter conjunct. And pretty much at the same degrees, 21 minutes and 48 degrees is Uranus. And 21 minutes and 43 degrees is Taurus. So they are conjunct. And the sun is in Taurus. So let's see what that means. What does Jupiter and... Uranus conjunct Taurus mean. Let me see. Jupiter conjunct Uranus. If it's unorthodox and unusual, you're likely into it. Oh. The more off beaten path, a philosophy, religion, or strain of thought is your upbringing, the better. You want to shake things up, even with your own thinking. You were probably never content to see things from one angle. That's me. Yet you share your convictions with such zeal that you could easily give off the impression that you believe what you're espousing forever and always will. Others might be surprised or even angered by how quickly you can cycle through your beliefs. Yet you're most attempting to see yourself in new ways. You even fear that you could be trapped in a cycle of th thinking and living like a zombie. That is my fear. Still, you need to look closer at the difference between those you believe you know well. Then you may discover more surprises you love and seek. What the hell is this? Perhaps a fortunate event suddenly shifts the unusual course of your life. The event
this said nothing to me. People talk too much sometimes in these, uh, like, why do people talk so much? Uranus and Jupiter conjunct meaning. I also listen to Molly McCord. I love her. I'm in love with her. A Jupiter Uranus conjunction is a time of lightning. The tarot correspondence for Jupiter for Jupiter is Wheel of Fortune and the Hangman. Movements come to breaking points and new ideas and inventions. Oppressive forces take big swings. So anything that's oppressive, like um, churches and stuff, they're going to have some issues. The last conjunction was in 2010 in Aries. And this is when we got SpaceX, WikiLeaks, and the Occupy movement. These are boiling points, but also that's Mars and war. So this is going to be about money and value. This is the domain of fertility and sexual power. Um, some people could get narcissistic. Through Uranus and Jupiter, though Uranus and Jupiter collide, okay, 14 Taurus came in the year that sort of debut of the Wonder Woman. <gasps> And Rosie the Riveter, ideas made into active and vivid icons. Now in 2024, new and immortal symbols will emerge. The chaos magic of Jupiter and Uranus allows us to act, bring fire to the mortals. After many years of discourse in the intellectual sphere, something tangible needs to take form. Now it's time to bring whatever has been in the ether to it's mortal coil. What is something you and your cohorts are engaged in that you're now seeing out in the world? Stop depending on institutions that have failed you. Make something new. All right. I really feel like I think people talk too much. I just want a simple answer. I think that, I feel like I want to get into astrology, guys. I've been thinking about it a long time. I think I need to get into the planets. I think I can help get into the planets and do psychic work. I think I want to, you know what I think I want to do? I think I want to create a written magazine. That could help explain, because I think the videos... I don't know. I'm thinking about it. I think I want to create a magazine that would help explain um, what I'm feeling, right? I don't want to do the hor horoscopes in tarot readings because that's just too much. But I think I want to, I think like, okay, let's say it's Jupiter and Uranus. I think my biggest problem, seriously, I think my biggest I think my biggest problem is do I have time? Do I have enough time or could could or could this replace the monthly horoscopes? What do you think? 
she's like, you know what I should do? I should create a magazine, right? And then I should appear on the cover like Oprah did. On every cover, I should appear, just like Oprah did. I was always jealous when Oprah did that. It seemed kind of weird and kind of suspect, but then I kind of liked it at the same time. What do you think? Should I create a, a written word of the planets and what it means to you? I don't know what I want to do. I just know something has to shift in me. Let me know. I don't know. I'm just talking out loud. Yes, don't play with my food. Right. No, you didn't. I'm hungry now. <laughs> Angry. I'm not asking certain questions from a place of fear. Oh, I know that. It wasn't you. You didn't, did you ask that question or somebody else did? Don't worry about it. Because ultimately all CERN's plans will fail anyway. Whoa. You know how it's gonna fail? Because I saw it, right? Okay. When my mind goes crazy, I start I start getting excited and then I can't talk. And I gotta stop that. I gotta learn to bring the word out. So all of a sudden the governments knew that there was way too much interest in the eclipse, which means people were going to get energy from the eclipse. All of a sudden, it wasn't safe for governments, right? So what did they do? They queued the clouds from the space station. So then three days before, they're like, oh, nobody's going to see the eclipse. Nobody's going to see the eclipse. And what did God do? With all the government manipulation, the eclipse was still coming through the clouds. What, what, what? Don't mess with God, CERN. So when you say something like CERN's plans will fail anyway, you're absolutely right. Whatever they create that goes against humanity, remember God is in that design, one. And two, CERN doesn't get to play God. Are we good? By the way, should I start a magazine? Morning, Ken Ken. Listen, speak the truth. Thank you, Chrissy. I love Chrissy. Same thing happened to me. What happened, Chrissy? Um, while you watch, you prepared mind, body, and spirit. Yes. Love a crafty plan. Yes. Speak your truth, sister. Thank you, sweetie. When a woman is fed up, there is nothing you could... Nothing. You know what happened? I'll tell you what happened. Okay. So, of course, I didn't just, like, leave him, right? I made the announcement. I was like, hey. Seriously, this is how I talk, right? Like, hey. So, I've decided that I'm leaving. I didn't even say it's because of the affair. Nothing, right? Nothing mattered at that point. Like, Get the fuck out. And I was like, so, I'm leaving. And he saw in my face the blank. It was just like blank. He saw it. And he's like, please don't leave. And I said, well, it's just that I already started leaving. So. And then he said, please don't leave. And he started crying. And so I hugged him because he was crying so hard. But. I cried, I cried when you said you, you four months before you could leave with some bitch. I cried. So I said, so he, he was on his knees and he was hugging me and I hugged him. I was like this. <laughs> I was like, well, I was rubbing his head, kissing his forehead. And I felt nothing nothing, no single emotion came through me. And that's when I knew I'm good. I'm good. I stayed in it. I watched him disrespect me. You didn't care when you made plans to fuck this bitch every weekend. You didn't care that I was in tears. And this isn't even revenge. 
I'm just done. Do you know to this day, I never had the regret ever. Never had the regret. I've always been amazingly happy. Have you ever, hey everyone, didn't feel sick at the eclipse? A lot of people did. We were just talking about that. Hi, King Colton. Just couldn't understand how all that love for each other comes out during shutdown and people just reset to selfish afterwards. No, you didn't have love. Nope. You never had love. Uh -uh. You two never had love for one another. Y'all had flesh love. Y'all had sex love. Y'all had pretend love, but you did not have soul love because soul love would never cheat on you, ever. Because it's the consideration, like soul love means I feel your pain if I do this. But you had flesh love, you had passionate love, right? And that's like, uh, to me, it's like love bombing, which I don't believe in love bombing. It's like love bombing, right? It's love that you had a visual love, right? It's Hallmark love. Hallmark, don't get mad at me. I love your movies, but it's still Hallmark love. Soul love. It's almost like you... It's almost like soul love is like, I think of you before I think of myself. I consider you. And it's not being like a wimp or submissive. It's not that. Now, many women get confused with their version of love. Why? Because we are taught to be submissive and loving and giving and, you know, Feed them their dinner. Da, 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 da. Here's your dinner. Here's your fried chicken and your collard greens. You like them carrots? What's that lady? I love her, but she's kind of making me sick a little bit. What's that lady that feeds that young man? It's, I think it's her husband, but I can't be sure of it because I'm so confused by this. I love to watch her because that is not soul love. And by the way, she's feeding him to kill him. Have you guys seen what she's feeding him? The boy's going to wind up with a heart attack soon. That is not love. And you got to believe me, even though I love her, I love her as a person. What I'm watching in their relationship is typical female love of the flesh. What's her name? The one that looks like that has the, the Shay Shay Club. Oh, man. I love her. What's yes? <laughs> what? What did I send him? I know, right? Aww. I thought you would be happy. This is my neighbor, Richard. I almost had to take a bath in Richard's house. You want love? Richard. I almost had to take a bath in Richard's house. You know what Richard would have done? Rolled out the red carpet. What kind of soap do you want? I, I could give you this soap. But do, you, like, do you need a couple of towels? Because I have to wash my hair too. That's love. My 92-year-old neighbor, I don't know how old he is, 84, he told me. He loves me. He's gay. I'll take love any way I could get it. I don't care if you're gay. <laughs> What's that woman's name? This did replace. What's this? This what? This? This replaced the monthly horoscopes? You think so? (laughs) 
No, I didn't. What they got? I need salad. Am I going with you? <laughs> Richard is so much fun. <laughs> he's annoying, but he's so much fun. Um, good health. Miss Nana! Miss Nana! <laughs> Miss Nana's going to kill that boy. Miss Netta is going to, I don't care how good she cooks. I don't care how much makeup they put on her. She going to kill that boy. She is giving that boy arteries, like um, clogged arteries. Most of y'all, as women, have acted like Miss Netta at one point in your lives, thinking that this form of servitude is love. It ain't. No. Mm-mm. So there you go, Miss Netta, Miss Netta, Miss Netta crazy. Miss Netta is killing that boy. Can y'all see it? She's love bombing because she don't want to lose him. And I can't stand the way he comes to the table. Can I be honest with you all? I'm so happy she has somebody. I'm so happy, like, the perfect match, like mismatch is the perfect match. Why doesn't that boy work? Please get a job. What is his name? Clarence, what's his name? Why isn't he working? Why is she cooking lunch for him in the middle of the day and it's got collard greens on the table? Give that boy some tuna fish and crackers and water. Y'all making Miss Netta famous, and I, I don't blame you. I think she deserves all of this. Oh, oh, yeah. I don't like them as much. I don't know if I trust them. Hmm. You hear what I'm saying? I love that she's famous. I love this for her. But the reason why y'all love her is because there's a part of you that wants to service a man. So Ned is like, Clarence, dinner's ready. And how does Clarence come to the table? Dirty shirt, holes in his uh, bathrobe, slushing his feet because he ain't never had to pick up his feet to do anything. I would never. Listen, don't rat on me. I don't, don't. Y'all are going to call Miss... Listen, because y'all do this with me with other bloggers, right? I'll say shit. I think it's between us. Y'all go to Tisha Tells. Y'all go to Kempire. Tracy said this. And Tracy be right. Y'all think I don't know this shit. I know everything because Spirit be telling me, right? Okay. So don't go telling Miss Netta because I love Miss Netta. But Miss Netta is a bad example of what mature women, older women, my age bracket women, used to do to their men because that's what they were conditioned to do i never had that con oh oh let me tell you something my husband at the time we were at his family gathering right and then um he's he was always so kind have to, except for his cheating he was a kind man and so he he would always be like i'm gonna get some food what do you want and I'd be like, oh, give me this, give me that. Like, no big deal. But his father was a tyrant. And his father did not respect his mother. And she serviced him. And all of a sudden, she was a netta to him, to her father. So we're at this family event. And my husband already knew. He already knew. He better not let his father see him act a certain way. So he comes up to me. He was real slick. He comes up to me and he goes, can you, can you go get my food? And I was like, what happened? And he's like, you know, just, just go get my food. And I was like, you're embarrassed by your father? Your father who treats your mother like shit? So you want to show your father that you have a disciplined woman? 
no, no, sir. That's not our family dynamic. We have a very loving family dynamic. Why are you changing it now? Because you want to show your father that I'm all disciplined and shit. No, then nobody eats. And if I get up there, I'm getting my own goddamn plate. I don't like that. All right. I hate a foot dragger. I know. Angela says, I always dislike when women made and served men plates, but didn't make the connection. It was love bombing out of fear of losing him. Right. Okay. So picture this. Picture this. My dad comes to live with me, right? Oh, oh, oh. And you know he's old school. My mama served my dad. I watched it. Okay. So now my dad comes to live with me. Now, the only reason why I would get his plate out of the pot is because I need to make sure hands are clean, right? I can't always guarantee hands are clean. So I'll, I'll get the food out the pot. What you want, dad? Just got it. This. Okay, got it, got it, got it. I would go give him the plate. I got to get something light because I don't want to ruin my... I would go hand him the plate, right? And I'd be like, here, dad, here. You know what he would do? Look me dead in my eye and, and sit, like put it down. And I'd be like, what's happening? And he's not using words now. He's like, I'm like, we're a big boy now. You're a very big boy. Take your plate. And then he would go, set it down. And so I threw it at him. Got all over his t-shirt, the food. Uh, 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 uh. I was like, I am not your wife. You are not about to live here and think I'm going to be mama. It's not going to happen. Now. You can get up and get your own plate. And at this point, I'm going to grab my own food. I'm going to package food away for the next day, get my son food, and whatever's left, he can just have. Because I, can, I can't always guarantee everybody's hands are clean, right? I was like, you can get your own food. Or the next time I bring you your plate, you grab the fucking plate, daddy. Oh, oh, he stopped that shit quick. He stopped that shit quick. And then you know what would happen? My mom would come over. What would my mom do? Serve him. And they would be loving it. My dad would go, Millie, Millie, since you're up already, can you give me an apple, Millie? I'm sitting on the sofa like, and then I look at my mom. mom. My mom's like, I did not come over to serve you. You up there acting like the king, but she grabs a fucking apple. I'm like, are you two, do you two need to be married again? Because y'all seem to like this shit. Miss Ned is killing that poor boy. He is going to have a heart attack. Now, you don't have to believe me. Who was that other woman that cooked the chicken? And her son used to film. She made the best food, but it was the greasiest heart attack food. Who was that woman? I can't remember her name either. She was real funny, always yelling at her son. <clears throat> it was hilarious. She died. Because the shit that she was serving up was unhealthy for the world. It was unhealthy for the world. So she was cute. But all y'all about to make some of her chicken. No, you're killing yourselves. So God had to take her. True story. <laughs> Aunt Fee! I love me some Aunt Fee. I love her to death. She was killing all y'all. Y'all were watching her cook them uh, greasy ass chickens. And y'all be like, oh, oh, Aunt Fee, I'm going to cook the chicken just like you did tomorrow. You know, gave you, your husband, and your children some fat-ass grease in your lungs, and you're all going to die. God had to take her. It was the wrong advice. 
Mm-hmm. It was the wrong advice. Now, if Anne Fee would have made some coleslaw, would have made some asparagus, would have made some greens and co- rice greens with coleslaw, she might have lived. She might have lived. Because whatever she was cooking, when the cameras were off, she was eating. True story. And sugar? What did she do with sugar, Ken? Can it? Yes, look, see, Kenneth, she did have a heart attack. I made a couple of her items only once a month, though, my Lord. Once a month is too much. Y'all can't be eating fried chicken once a month anymore. You should not do it. Nope. And sugar? Did she make Kool-Aid, child? Did she make some nasty-ass Kool-Aid? Because I bet she did. All right. Can't get my beret on. I'm too tired. She made a drink for kids. That's that's that that was it. God was like, get up here. Enough already. That was it. That was the end of the story. Wait, they never looked at Simply Risa? I don't know who that is. That fellow, I watch her and think, my Lord, who is Simply Risa? Oh, look at, see? Okay, see, this is love. So Richard, who absolutely loves me, I'm, I'm so honored to have his friendship. And I mean that. So there's this, well, I like the art farm. There's this farm and another farm. And so I don't, I'm not crazy about this farm. I like the other farm. And so he goes, they got me into cherry tomatoes. I don't eat tomatoes at all, but they got me into it, right? Uh, Heirloom tomatoes, right? So he says, he says they have cherry, cherry, cherry tomatoes. So I don't respond, right? And he goes, I'll share this cherry tomatoes with you. (laughs) And then he puts little kissy, he puts little kissy emojis. (laughs) He's always sending me emojis. (laughs) These are the emojis he sends. (laughs) Richard loves me. (laughs) <laughs> this is Richard, by the way. He's so cute. This is Richard. Richard loves me. <laughs> oh, my God. Rich is trying to be black. Look, <laughs> he puts a peach in him. <laughs> Richard cracks me up. One day, Rich is, I'm going to tell you this, but it's very embarrassing, right? Are you guys ready for this story? It's so embarrassing. So. Richard is so in love with me that he sends me like stuff like this, right? And then um, all kinds of things he sends me, right? (laughs) He sends an emoji that he's hugging me. It's hilarious, right? But it's innocent, right? It's innocent until one day I'm in my group and I don't know what happened it was 9.47 p.m. I don't know what happened. And Richard sends me a picture. Should I show you guys the picture? Because I'm so embarrassed by this picture. Richard sends me a picture. And I busted out laughing. I'm in my group. And I busted out laughing. And I was like, Brandy, oh, my God. My Richard is going crazy. Because he is. He's absolutely going crazy. His love for me is like 
out of control, right? <laughs> goes, Rich. <laughs> so he sends me a picture, and I said, Brandy, can I show the picture to the group? And I said, I'll send it to you privately, and then you share it to the group. Brandy's name is BR. I go to send the picture to Brandy, BR, and I sent it to my son, Brian, B-R-Y. And I, I sent it, boom, it sends. And then I realized, and I can't delete. Everybody's like, no, delete it, delete it. I was like, I can't delete it. They update your phone, update your phone, you delete it. I was like, I can't. My son immediately goes, what the hell is this? And I was like, oh my God. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. I did not send it to you. I meant to send it to my group. I meant to send it to a BR, not to you. I'm so sorry, Brian, I'm so sorry. This is the picture that Richard sent me. Unsolicited. I'm so embarrassed. I don't even know, like, he's my Miss Netta. Like, why are you doing this? It is out of control now. Your love for me has reached new levels. What is this fantasy you have with me now? Now I'm scared. I'm embarrassed. My son sees a picture of a man that's presumably naked that I did not take the picture. Oh my God. So I'm like, Brian, this is not, this is not what you think. This is, this is bizarre your world. I don't know how I got there. I'm so embarrassed. And then I showed the group and we were in stitches. My life is hell now. My life is hell because I don't know how to stop this. I'm so happy. I know about the delete option on iPhone now. I got to update my iPhone. Your local crew is so funny. Hi, Steph. They are hilarious. I can't stop them. They are hilarious. Um, That's a good point. I think you should serve each other. One person should not, one person should not be the only one serving. I think, I think the word serve is not the best choice of words. Like there's a commercial, right? Of this interracial couple, right? And they're reading the paper at the table and the guy closes his paper and then he goes, he grabs the coffee and he gives her the coffee. Hold on a second. Where's my mute button? Oh, here. Um, and he closes the paper and he looks at his wife's coffee and he grabs the coffee and he pours it for her and he puts it back and he goes back to reading his paper. And then she goes, that's love to me. That's love. The, like the consideration the kindness from your soul. So when it's real love, it's not servitude. It's not service. It's just, oh, I got you this because I know you ran out of the toothpaste that you like. It's different. It's different. But the other person has to receive it with the same type of love of the giver and then vice versa. But the way our parents have been brought up was like, woman, you better do. And it's like, mm, no, kiss my ass. All right. No, I know I'm still alive, but I'm not alive with the 84-year-old man. That is not going to happen. No, I would make him very happy. There's no way he could make me happy. This, this, this. Let's remember that. <laughs> I would make his day. 
So with all that being said, because he sends me all of these like emojis of love, I went to him and I said, you know, there was too many people in my apartment and I really needed to take a shower. And I was just about to come to you to say, can I take a shower in your house? This was Tuesday. And he goes, he would have been so happy. He would have kept coming in and checking in on me. <laughs> Hello? Do you need a different type of soap? Close the door, Richard. Close the door. Oh, I just wanted to make sure that that would be the... <laughs> I need to make a comedy out of this. I need to write this. <laughs> I need to write a, uh, a short story that's like, Richard loves me or something. I could do it. Cat, Cat was there. Cat remembers. <laughs> Cat was in book club. I was like, no. Cat was the one that was like, update your phone. <laughs> My son, that poor boy. Oh, imagine getting something like that from your child. My poor son. Like I just got back together with him, and I'm showing him naked pictures that I, that I did, had nothing to do with. It was I did not do anything with this man. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, Brenna's Diaz. She's like woke up to Netta. Oh my God. All right, guys, I'm going to get out of here because it's 11, 12. How about if I do, oh, oh, um, I'm a, I could do CERN tonight, but I have to come on early tonight, guys. So I have to come on at five o'clock tonight. If you're okay with that, then I can do a reading on CERN. And then y'all can watch it whenever you want to watch it. How's that? It'll still be your nightly show, but it'll just come on early. All right, guys. I love you guys. Take it easy. Bye. What's the question on CERN, by the way? Angela, I'll text you. I'll text you. Gals and guys, go to Tracy Brown Live. Go to Tracy Brown Live. Go to Tracy Brown Live. Gals and guys, go to Tracy Brown Live. Go to Tracy Brown Live. Go to Tracy Brown Live. Okay, so Mom G. Too many people complained. And she is so quiet now. But I do hear, so she doesn't beat the child in the front anymore because too many people complain. So I hear her beating him in the back, but not as often anymore. So there's been some improvement. She just takes out her frustration on that poor boy. But it has gotten better. All right. Bye, guys. Gals and guys, go to Tracy Brown Live. Go to call me for your own personal reading. 213-458-7408. I am available for you. Okay. Bye, guys. Gals and guys, go to Tracy Brown Live. Go to Tracy Brown Live. Go to Tracy Brown Live. Gals and guys, go to Tracy Brown Live. Go to Tracy Brown Live. Go to Tracy Brown Live.